Welcome to Kenya Squad. In today's episode, we have uh, Dan here with his beautiful S14. What's up, Dan? How's it going, dude? Good, good, good. Have a good self. Another great day. It's yeah. Very nice, right? <laughs> Southern California car culture. You can't complain. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, Dan, tell us yeah. about yourself. Pretty much. Originally, originally from the East Coast, New Jersey. Found my way to Arizona for school and then eventually, you know, got a job in California. Been out here about six years and loving every second of it. Nice. Yeah. How you got into the car culture? Car culture for myself, I remember at a young age just riding in the back seat of my parents' car mm -hmm. um, and I would just look out the window and kind of see cars go by and just started to memorize every brand, every model and it just stuck into me that I just loved cars, anything with four wheels, whether it be a truck or a car, I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you know, my dad bought this vehicle here in 1995 wow. and back then it was nothing special, just a regular cruiser to get by for him to go to the train station at home to get to New York. And uh, then Fast and the Furious came out. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw this in the movie. Uh, I believe one of the females was driving it, it was Maroon. Mm -hmm. And I asked my dad when I turned 16, I was like, hey, can I uh, have your car instead of getting, you know, just a Honda Civic or something easy to get to and from? And he luckily gave me the vehicle. And uh, from there, the modding began pretty much. So mind if I ask you, what do you do for a living? Because a lot of people always asking those kind of questions. Yeah. Of course, I mean, uh, originally I was in construction building materials for a while, mm -hmm. and I just hated my life, hated waking up for work. And I wanted to know that I, I wanted to work in the car industry, whether it be an automotive, customizable something. Mm -hmm. um, I now work for Yokohama Tire. And nice. Absolutely love it. I wake up and it doesn't feel like a job. Um, it is fun, I'm passionate about it, and I get to do what I love, talk cars, talk tires, with customers every day. We're coming to this thing. Tell yep. us a bit more, Yep. backstory. Yep. Uh, you said uh, your dad bought it. Dad bought it brand new. It was supposed to literally just be an easy car to drive, great mile per gallon, to and from work. Mm -hmm. um, then the car culture hit, Fast and Furious came out. I really wanted to have this vehicle. So from the age I was 16, it's been through a ton of different paint colors, ton of different modifications. And it has been my baby that I can never sell. Passionate about it, love this vehicle. Um, and I can never get rid of it. So you did literally gave you the keys and said enjoy he literally gave me the keys um he bought you know an audi a4 at the time when i was you know of age to drive um and i began to modify his old nissan mm -hmm. which was my dream uh it was starting to become hot in those early 2000s mid 2000s years where you know the body kits were coming out the turbos the engine swaps were all becoming readily available from japan mm -hmm. and i thought it was the time to strike and uh, to build my dream car that my dad bought originally mm -hmm. so in my eyes it was a lot more of an emotional tie because i know every single thing that's been done to this car i remember sitting in the back seat where my feet couldn't even touch the driver's seat because i was a little baby yeah. and um it's just you know i feel like it's a part of the family now i can't get rid of it Let's talk about modifications about this yeah, car. Totally. Uh, I think uh, I saw some pictures. Yep. There were several cars during its life. Yes. So yeah. Originally it was... Originally it was maroon. maroon. So just a, a dark red color from the factory. Um, my dad just got that because he didn't want white, he didn't want black. And there, back then there wasn't a lot of color options. Oh, yeah. So he went with maroon. Um, luckily also bought the slick top. So he opted for the non-sport edition. Mm -hmm. and he got the base model which luckily comes with a manual transmission, no sunroof, um, you know, no power locks, but it's perfect. And then uh, from there, I originally painted it um, magnetic gray pearl, which is an Audi color, mm -hmm. and then moved on to a flat black. I had a you know, big body kit everywhere, and it was that time of the years to do that. Smoked so, out the ambers and everything. Um, and then I've always loved Laguna Seca Blue. Mm -hmm. So this has been my favorite dream color uh, from the BMW M3 E46. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I decided, you know what, let's let's paint this thing with Luna Seca Blue. Nice. Ever crossed your mind to buy an E46 or were there any the other cars you were thinking about? I, um, when my dad bought the Audi, I began to really like the Audis. Um, I really like the RS4 and most recently the RS3. Uh, you know, I like the idea of a turbo. I like the idea of big power, small car. Um, but I knew if I bought another vehicle like that, I would have then two customized, like, customizable cars, um, two tuners, and I didn't want to get into that realm and I already have one. Yeah, it's a, it's a steep road. It is, yeah, <laughs> it's a steep road, as I can see with this. It's been through so many stages and parts yeah. and money, 
that uh, I don't want to get another project on my yeah, hands. Your pocket right now. is not going to be exactly <laughs> right. Exactly. So tell us about the modifications. I see you got yes. the bigger brakes, you yep. got the intercooler, yep. and uh, the best part you have an SR in this part. Correct. Yes. So I can pop you... the hood if you'd like, or yeah, start on the outside. We'll pop the hood. the hood. We'll start with the uh, modifications underneath. What I went for is a uh, SR swap from Japan. We ended up going with the black top. Mm -hmm. So there's a red top and a black top SR. Mm -hmm. um, black top, a little bit larger, a uh, little bit larger turbo, T28 turbo, uh, two liter. And from there, I just added all the bolt-ons. Nice, so you ever dynoed it or approximately? It's never been on the dyno. I would say right now, it's roughly around that 300 number. Mm -hmm. um, tuned up the boost a little bit. This summer, we're gonna go through a, a very large rebuild, mm -hmm. um, working with Tomei and Brian Crower as well. So we're gonna do a fully forged engine, uh, bigger turbo, and then I wanna make roughly, you know, 450, 500. Um, I just think it's time to rebuild this motor. It's never been rebuilt, all stock internals, so I think it's just about that time. Yeah, stock turbo and everything. Exactly, yep, and I have hadn't had any issues, uh, no leaks, you know, occasionally you get a little drip here and there, but nothing major and it's been running great ever since I had yeah. it in, installed it around 2006. That was my other question about the reliability of this thing. Reliability, like I said, zero issues. Um, you're not gonna get insane power. You know, if you want big power, you can you know, move towards you know, the LS motors, RBs. Mm -hmm. uh, but for me, this was an extremely budget-friendly build that mm -hmm. still has enough power to have fun. Easily can uh, squeal the tires in the rear and kick yeah. it out if you want to. And you still have the AC? Still have air conditioning, yes. So, <laughs> driving around on hot days in California, you know, it's not a bad idea to have that. So yeah, it's a pretty reliable thing. And and still from those engines, you yes. can push up to eight or 900. Right, fully built, you can definitely get big power out of it. Right now with stock internals, mm -hmm. um, I don't want to do any detrimental damage to the vehicle. So once we get the forged internals, bigger turbo, we're going to see a lot more power. Uh, but right now, cruising around on the streets, it has plenty of power to really get it going. You ever took it to the track? I've actually never tracked it. Um, I did some drifting with it back in the day in high school. Uh, growing up in New Jersey, we had Wall Speedway, so a place where they had drift before. Obviously. So um, taking it there a few times when it was still rattle canned and banged around, but mm -hmm. for now it's mainly just my weekend cruiser that I love taking out to Cars and Coffee, driving PCH, and just attending car shows. So future plans yep. for the whole car besides yep. uh, rebuilding the engine? Yeah, I mean future plans, eventually maybe tuning the body a little bit. Right now I love the OE Plus look, um, but maybe another lip, maybe a little difference on the side skirts, some different mirrors. Um, the engine's gonna be the big overhaul this summer. Um, and most recently I did do the big brake kit, which mm -hmm. is an Evo 10 swap. So from the new Mitsubishi Evo. And uh, the Gram lights have been a recent addition as well, which I love the uh, original JDM look to them. Yeah, I love Gram lights. Yes. I think it just sits perfectly. There's no spacers. Uh, it's just an 18 by nine and a half with a 22 offset. Um, and it just fits perfectly on the stock body. Yeah, that's the key when, with the wheels. Just got the right offset Correct. and get rid of the spacers. Correct. So there's nothing wrong with the spacers, but I think it's just better to do the right way. I think it's a more pure form to not have the spacer. If you can get that stock body line with perfect stance, uh, that's what I want. Yeah. I mean, slamming's great. I just want something that's functional. So I lowered it a little bit on stance coilovers. They're GR Plus, and uh, it's been perfect. Great and I anyway. really like that you kept the original front end because yes. usually people they swap them to S15, which Correct. looks weird. Yep. My the strawberry opinion. face, totally. Yeah, or, yep. or the kooky. Uh, yeah. Yep. So exactly. that would be 97, 98. This is original 95. Um, the only difference on the front are these are the uh, European headlights. Mm -hmm. So those are full glass. I did not want to have the plastic because over time they yellow, they crack. Exactly. Um, so those are one of my favorite modifications I was able to do this vehicle. And the front uh, bumper? Front bumper is a Nismo 270R. So the Nismo 270R was a limited production run that Nissan ran. Mm -hmm. um, I love that it was a little bit more aggressive, but not you know, two in your face that looked after market. Mm -hmm. Again, going for that whole OEM plus look where this is something that you could have had from the factory, but with a little subtle changes. What about the suspension mods? Yep, suspension, um, I went with Stance GR Plus coilovers. Mm -hmm. They're perfect for what I'm doing. Um, I'm not tracking, like I said, I just want something reliable that's still fun in the canyons or cruising around. Mm -hmm. um, I've had these on about six years. Had zero issues at all, fully adjustable. So when I, you know, change wheels or change setups, I can easily just adjust to make sure everything is fitting perfectly. How's the ride quality? Ride quality is great. I mean, I like being on a stiffer ride, being in a sports car. Um, I chassis mounted my Sparco buckets. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm feeling every little thing, which I kind of enjoy. <laughs> it feels like I'm in a race car, sits yeah. nice and low. 
Um, I did not want to opt for sliders since I'm the only one driving this vehicle. Mm -hmm. I just thought let's chassis mount and that way, you know, I'm the only one driving this car. Yeah, and what about the exhaust? Exhaust is Megan Racing. Um, it is a catless straight pipe all the way back. Mm -hmm. um, has a nice tone to it. It definitely uh, is a little bit loud when you get on it, but I absolutely love it and free flowing. So it's a lot of fun. So being loud in this amazing color. Yes. What about the police? So um, I haven't had too many issues. Uh, luckily, I always obey all traffic, you know, signals you go. and speed limits. And um, I feel like I have a good uh, relationship with some of the local police officers here. A lot of them happen to be car guys, which is awesome for the Newport Beach community. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, haven't had any issues. Yeah, I mean, there are people too. As long as you're not breaking the law, right. you, they see you, yep. everything is fine. I learned my lesson when I was 16, got pulled over. <laughs> Illegal street racing, no all, way. Uh, excessive no, driving, that's interesting. and then uh, yeah, I got, that was my ticket. Uh, my parents said, "Okay, you got to pay off this ticket before you get your car back." How much was it? Um, you know, I don't even remember, but I know I was mowing lawns for six months in order to get that money because I needed my car back. So I learned my lesson. Ever since then, it's uh, it's been a clean ride. Nice. <laughs> I really like about this car that it is uh, very clean, especially yep. inside the dashboard, no cracks. Thank you. Uh, yes. Tell us about the interior of this yeah, car. Yeah, the interior of this car, um, I wanted to keep it again on that OEM plus look. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, kept the dash completely clean. You know, I added the gauges on the pillar, but that's just, you know, adding boost and air fuel ratio, which mm -hmm. I feel is necessary. Um, the inside of the cabin as well is, uh, I went for the Sparco Evo. Uh, these are the buckets. I chassis mounted both sides. Um, great fitment. I used to have recliners in there and I just wanted something a little bit more race-like and feel for it. So I went with these. Um, everything else is pretty much stock inside besides the harnesses, Nismo shift knob, and a uh, Momo steering wheel. Just a classic period correct design. Yeah, um, you got the auto power, I see. Uh... Yep, auto power roll cage, four point, a little bit stiffer chassis. Um, yeah, I love it. It's not anything over the top, but it's enough to make you feel good. Even the floor mats, yes. everything is a JDM style. I wanted to keep it very period correct to the mid 90s, how you know people would drive their cars back then and design. I didn't want to go over the top, so that way you know, in 10, 20 years, this car still looks relevant. Mm -hmm. It still looks something that people would like to see. What was the mileage on the car yep. when your dad gave you the keys? Mileage on the car, my dad gave it to me, I want to say it was right around 110, 120 or so. So he was enjoying this car. He was actually. enjoying this car, yeah. He was driving, he always taught me, he said, look, you're never gonna get the joy of an automatic as you would in a manual. Mm -hmm. um, so he taught me at a young age, you know, I remember sitting on his lap and, you know, just putting the shift knob into gears, getting it to understand the feel for it. And uh, I can't thank him enough for getting me into a manual car because from this day and out, I'm never not gonna be able to own a manual transmission. There's just certain joys you get out of banging gears that you will never get from Palace. Yeah, I guess this car will go to your son or daughter. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> in the future. I can I can never sell this thing. Um, I have too many memories and uh, too much joy out of it, even if it's just on a Saturday morning cruising around. That's how it's supposed to be, I guess. Yes, it's a, it's a piece of me now. I feel like so wherever I go, this car has to come with me. How many miles on the new engine, by the way? So when I got the motor, um, from what they say, it had roughly 25,000 to 30,000. From what they say. From what so they say. And <laughs> so you never know. Yeah. You never know when you're getting a motor. Um, the chassis right now has about 160,000 on it. What the motor may have, I'm not sure. Um, but the good news is, like I said, this summer we're going to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, I'll have a brand new, fresh motor when it's all said and done. Nice. Yes. So you said previously had like some sort of the wide body kit? So I had like a wider body kit on it. So, you know, the big side skirts, the big um, rear bumper and everything. And I just wanted to go back to how mm -hmm. you could have bought in this car from Nissan. So I wanted to have that clean design. Uh, the rear bumpy rear bumper is off of a Kuki. Mm -hmm. um, and these are little add-ons from the Kuki as well. The side skirts were available on the SE model mm -hmm. or the Kuki. So again, those were additional pieces that we ended up putting onto it. Yeah, it looks very clean and organic. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's a little bit something extra from the factory. And I like the way the exhaust uh, uh, tip looks like. Usually it's like either very, very small right. or it's like so huge you can stick your head in there. Yep, this is a perfect just kind of in-between size. I didn't want something over the top, but I wanted something that was, you know, a nice tone, a nice noise to it, but didn't disrupt everyone that I drove by. And I guess uh, me as well as everybody else would love to hear this car. Yeah, of course.
Right, so uh, I see you have a bigger brakes. Yep. As you said, they are from Evo? Yes, these are the Evo 10 brakes. Um, it's a direct kind of fit with a bracket in the back for the all S14 owners. Um, this car originally came four lug. Mm -hmm. I wanted to swap for that five lug, obviously because you know, another lug is great, but you have a much broader option of wheel designs. Mm -hmm. um, so I opted for the Evo brakes. Uh, I upgraded with the Gram lights. These are 5.7DR, 18 by nine and a half with a plus 22 offset. Um, wrapped in Yokohama Advan AO52 rubber. Mm -hmm. These are 245 4018s. I wanted, you know, the stickiest, fastest tire I could find that I could still daily drive, you know, on the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's a perfect combination with this. So the brakes are basically is bolt on. Correct. All you need is a bracket, which a lot of companies now sell online. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a simple bracket that goes behind and the brakes just slap right on. It's a very uh, modest, easy way to get a big brake kit upgraded from the small S14 brakes that the car came with. How long you were waiting for the Gram lights? Gram Wait. lights took a while. Uh, I think uh, the COVID had a little bit to do with that as well, but coming over from Asia, mm -hmm. um, I waited roughly six months to get these wheels. Yeah. Um, I really wanted the black ones. I think it just sits perfectly with this vehicle mm -hmm. and um, the tires as well. Sometimes there's uh, inventory issues, but right now we have a great stock on the, uh, the Advan AO52s. Mm -hmm. And I uh, really like the Fitman. Thank you. Fitman yeah. is nice. I wanted to have something that, you know, I'm not going to rub if I'm going to corner or canyon with yeah. this car but I want to make sure that it's not too high. So it came a lot of testing back and forth and I found this is a perfect fitness. Finger gap. That's it, exactly. Six in, yes. barely. Then you're, you're good, <laughs> right. And these are all stock fenders, so no need to roll them or anything. It's just a, a perfect fitment on the stock body. So you said your dead body is brand new, so obviously you got some papers. Yes, so what's awesome about it is I do have the original purchase receipt. I still held on to this, the original purchase receipt, uh, showing that in uh, September 24th, 1994, my dad, did purchase this uh, from Holden and Nissan. Traded in his Nissan Stanza at the time, mm -hmm. the old wagon. And uh, just a little bit of a uh, memento to always carry with the car and let them know that, yeah, this was originally my family's. So I see it says install air conditioning. <laughs> yes. Uh, that means they originally came without the AC. It was an option, I believe, at the time to get that. Um, and you can see here, original price, $16,847. So I'm hoping this uh, now eclipsed what it originally was worth. and. Uh, now we have a little profit on it. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. So yes. can you imagine back in the days, AC unit was an option. Exactly. And now it's like an everyday thing, you know, yeah. and now I need air conditioning seats. Or now we're removing the AC, you know. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. They make room for power parts. But uh, yeah, I wanted to share that with you and just, uh, it's a cool little memento I'll always have with the car. Nice. Yes. Also, what about the mirrors? Yeah, so the mirrors are uh, Ganador style. So originally, they were just full pieces, and I wanted to opt for a more aerodynamic look. I think they're really clean um, and add a little style to the vehicle as well. And of course, the Sylvia grill had to add that. Um, let them know. Of course, it's not a real true Sylvia from Japan, but the whole styling cue and everything about it, uh, it was called the Sylvia overseas. So might as well just call it that now since it is no longer a 240SX uh, being the 2.4 liter engine that came with it. Uh, now it has a 2 liter. It has a original JDM part, so... Exactly, might as well match it with the exterior. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So my next question is actually, yeah. what's uh, next for Dan? What's next for me? Well, um, I want to sell more tires at Yokohama. Loving my job. Um, I have a, another build that was supposed to be a daily driver. It's my truck, it's a Ford mm -hmm. Ranger, which I've been working on as well. Um, I want to just get to more events. And my goal is to drive this up when the engine is rebuilt to mm -hmm. Monterey Car Week here in August. I'm going to Montreal as well. We might, we're going to have to link up and do something <laughs> together, right? From LA. Yeah. I've always been there the past couple of years uh, pre-COVID and I've never brought in this car before. I've wanted it to be perfect. So it's a long time coming with mm -hmm. the new wheels, the brakes, and now the engine build. Um, and I finally feel that it's now worthy to, you know, drive up, cruise, and, you know, hang out with a lot of like-minded individuals. Well, building is a process. It takes time. It takes so much you time. You've got to be patient. Yep. I'm going to actually ship this car to Arizona mm -hmm. to my good buddy, uh, Porsche at Akina Motorsports. He's mm -hmm. going to work on the vehicle, take it under his wing and rebuild that whole motor and get it to where uh, I really want it to be. Do you have uh, any plans to maybe hit the track once yeah. in this car? Definitely. Once the motor's built uh, and I can actually have some real power under the hood mm -hmm. and uh, keep up with some of the newer modern race cars that are out there, that's going to be a goal of mine. Um, you know, Button Willow, Adams, Apple Valley, all those fun places are where I want to take this car. Uh, hoping to have the engine build and everything complete mm -hmm. um, by the end of, towards the end of summer, hopefully like June or July. 
It's perfect, actually. I think uh, it's even better towards autumn because mm -hmm. it's not going to be so hot. Exactly. Like December is perfect. Right, and the turbos, they love the cold weather. Yeah. So, you know, once it's getting worked on when it's hotter in California, I'm going to enjoy it when it starts to cool down in the fall. Nice. Yeah. Are you planning to get maybe another sports car, GD, yeah. and you have something in mind? I, I mean, I always want to add to my collection. Mm -hmm. um, you know, girlfriend maybe doesn't want me to have more toys than I should. But um, I want to get something maybe on the Euro side. I have my JDM baby and you know nothing's going to be able to take away the JDM love with this car. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe next thing will be some sort of, you know, Porsche, BMW, Audi, something like that to get into. How's your girlfriend feels about your passion and hobby about the car? She loves that I'm passionate. Mm -hmm. She loves the hobby. Um, she calls this car stinky because of the <laughs> exhaust. Um, she prefers the Tesla. Um, and she also has, a, she has an Audi SQ5 right now. So she likes the, you know, the fast cars, but mm -hmm. um, she thinks this is a little too old, a little too stinky, a little too loud. Um, but and you smell gas when you're coming home. Exactly. <laughs> Let's just say I go to Cars and Coffee alone, most likely every morning when I go. <laughs> but um, she still is happy that I, you know, I do love this car and she knows I do. That's yes. amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. She, she accepts it. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Man. It was a pleasure. Amazing car. Yeah.